Good morning, everybody on YouTube. Steve Rakin here. Rakin Profit. Want to come to you guys with a live show showcasing some of the uh, top selling items that are going to be uh, really good for you to buy and sell on eBay moving forward in 2017 when it comes to selling clothing on eBay. So, in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing you know, during today's show is just doing some research throughout the sold listings. We're not going to be studying items of actual listings that I've sold. I think you guys know the drill. Um, I found from my experience, it serves, it serves you guys and my audience better just going through exactly what is selling, what other people are selling, what brands are selling, how much it's selling for, um, and giving you guys an opportunity to kind of ask questions based on what we see, maybe, you know, in terms of keywords or photography or the description or, or just any thoughts that you guys have. So this is a really cool interactive opportunity for, for both of us to be able to kind of open up the dialogue and chit chat about what's selling on eBay, right? If you guys don't know my story, um, I got started selling on, well, just selling in general online uh, about three or four years ago. I started with Craigslist, selling bicycles online, learned from my uh, buddy and business partner, the Bonafide Hustler. Um, I live in Connecticut. It started getting cold, so I had to look for other ways to make money, learned about eBay, and learned about clothing in particular. And uh, went full time for a couple of years. Wrote a few books about selling clothing, and you know I'm still super passionate about it. Although I, you know, I only sell clothing part time now, as I do have my hands in quite a few different cookie jars and different businesses. I'm still very passionate about clothing, and I think it's a great opportunity for anybody who wants to make, you know, uh, at least a couple extra hundred bucks per month, or maybe a, a couple thousand dollars per month. Um, if you're willing to work hard, I think it's a good opportunity. I think it is, you know, like I said, hard work, which, you know, I think puts off a lot of resellers. I think a lot of people are trying to look for kind of easier ways to make money online, whether that's drop shipping or starting their own e-commerce website or Amazon FBA, wholesale, private label. Um, we're just selling other various types of items. So um, I think eBay is a great opportunity, uh, especially clothing. Number one, because there's an abundance of clothing out there, right? Number two, the profit margins are excellent. Number three, you can typically get items um, fairly cheap, which means you don't need a ton of money to start. And number four, like I said, the competition isn't very fierce. Now, obviously, there is... You know, there's people out there who are buying and selling clothes, and you'll run across them every now and then, but you'll find a lot more people scanning books and kind of competing for private label products versus looking for clothes. And there's so many different types of clothing, so many different variables, so many different factors. I think it's a great opportunity. So I'm excited for this live show. Um, I'm going to dive into the comments real quick and shout some people out. So welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me switch pages and get over to the comments section. Where are we? Okay, cool. We got Vinyl Wave. What's going on, dude? GVHBBG, whatever that stands for. Good to see you, Adam M. Uh, just sold a Donald Trump tie yesterday. That's pretty cool. Um... Somebody, somebody asks, Roberto, what's going on, Roberto? Have you lost money on this business? I just lost my whole month sales, and I'm very disappointed. What would you recommend me? Um, you're going to have to give more details. Um, you're saying you lost money on this business. I mean, if you're buying correctly, right, and you're buying cheap, I don't see how you could lose money. I could see there being you know, cash flow issues, and it'll take time to get your money back. But if you're doing your research properly, and you know you're getting in with good margins, you know, especially with clothing. It's kind of hard to to lose your shirt, right? <laughs> no pun intended. Um, so I'd have to you know see a little more detail in terms of what you're buying and what's kind of going on behind the scenes. Adam M says, "Thanks for this channel. I've started selling ties. Thanks, Raken. Yeah, my girlfriend. Um, I actually." Got her started selling ties, and I had a bunch of ties laying around the house, and I gave her a bunch of them, and they've actually been selling. She sold a Burberry tie the other day. She sold some Ralph Lauren ties. She sold – what did she sell the other day? It was a – it was a new with Tags Brooks Brothers tie. So, yeah, ties are definitely pretty cool. Make some money. Uh, Pinarello Rider, yo, Rakin, checking in from Atlanta. What's going on? Hey, Lucky from Miami. What's going on? Good to see you guys. 
So, um, yeah, let's just dive into the show, guys. Um, I do want to say right now, uh, smash that like button. Do me a big favor. If you if you enjoy these kind of like laid back, relaxed shows where we just kind of study and research together and just kind of shoot the shit, uh, <laughs> smash that like button. Show some love. Uh, also, I want to let you guys know, in I think it's in two or three days from now, we are going to be closing off uh, the accounting and bookkeeping workshops. So I actually... Myself in the green room, we teamed up with Anna Hill, who is a 20-year CPA, tax professional, and also e-commerce seller. She sells on eBay and Amazon and Etsy. We teamed up with her to create the ultimate accounting and bookkeeping workshop for resellers on eBay and Amazon. This is a five-week workshop. It's going to be one video per week, and we're going to be going through a whole bunch of different things that pertain to um, accounting responsibilities, inventory and cost of goods, how to properly record your revenue, categorizing your transactions, managing receipts, managing your account in general. Um, and we've teamed, teamed up with Anna to kind of create you know, a one and all package for, for somebody who's really overwhelmed with you know, how to get everything together for their accountant, you know, how to get everything ready and prepared for taxes. And I know this is kind of bad timing. I know a lot of people are, you know, in the trenches right now with Q4. But before you know it, guys, the year is going to be over. April is going to be coming up and uh, you're going to have to be prepared. So if you don't know how to properly manage your accounting and your books, you could be overpaying or you could even be putting yourself in position to get in trouble. So we've got this workshop that we've created. And excuse me, I misspoke before. It's actually a two-week wor workshop with five one-hour calls. So I apologize. So it's only it's, it's over two weeks. Um, it's going to be live shows. The replays will be available. It's with Anna Hill. So check this out at greenroomuniversity.com forward slash workshop. Uh, this is actually going to be closed off in two, two or three days. It's starting the, I believe the 15th it's starting. So check this out if you guys are interested in that. That's definitely a good little uh, workshop. We've had about 90, no, over 100, 100, I think over 100 people, 117 people sign up so far. So let's uh, let's dive into it, guys. Uh, let's start studying some clothing that has sold. So this is a really good brand right here, guys. Um, I don't think I've ever come across this brand. Let me know if you guys have ever found it. Uh, the brand is Tom Ford. If you guys ever listen to uh, any hip hop rap music, I know Jay Z had come out with a song with uh, this name in it, Tom Ford. This is a very high end brand. I've never come across it. I'm still on the lookout for it. Uh, but it looks like this item was sold for sixty five bucks. Pictures aren't even that great, but I mean the brand is just so high end. Italian brand right here. Be on the lookout for this. I don't know if you're ever going to find it, guys, but Tom Ford is a spectacular, spectacular brand. I can make you some really good money. All right. What else do we have in the chamber? So this brand right here, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it Shot or Shot. Um, I actually just sold this brand um, it was about a week and a half ago. It was a... Uh, it was a vest. It was brand new with tags. I sold it for 70 bucks. It was kind of like a vintage, uh, old school type of vest. Had fur all around. It was really cool. But this brand could bring you in some really, really good money. How do you pronounce it? I have no clue. But just look at this, guys. Study, study this right here. I'm going to type this into the sold listings as well because I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. This brand does very, very well. I found it probably four or five times. So it's definitely out there. Uh, I'm going to put men's clothing. I want to show you some of these items, guys, that are selling within this brand right here. We'll call it Shoit. Let's go to sold listings. Uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, guys. And this is the cool thing about clothing, guys. There's so many brands out there. So many different brands out there. And the cool thing is about each brand, there's like a million different styles of items you could find. I mean, check this out. 53, 300. This is a cool motorcycle jacket that sold for 75. Leather jacket, 240. Here's a vest. Uh, Shoit NYC, 40 bucks. So... The, the items that I that I found that sell best within this brand is the bomber jackets. So check this out. Old jackets they used to wear uh, in the military. You can typically tell it's a bomber jacket just based on the style. A lot of times you'll see like the little fur going around the collar area, but not always. Um, 
it's kind of hard to describe, but this is what it looks like. This is definitely an awesome item to be on the lookout for. Sold for 149 bucks and 90 cents. Up for sale is a cool vintage short. I'm going to call it that. I, I guarantee I'm pronouncing it wrong. Bomber jacket, tag size 50, but fits like a modern men's large. Lots of wear from age. So some people will probably pass on this item thinking like, oh, it's all beat up. Like, even though it's not really that beat up, but like thinking like, you know, look, there's discoloration on the sleeves. Like, who's going to want this? People actually love this stuff. I mean, it kind of it kind of gives the item character. So certain items you guys got to realize when it comes to clothing, it's okay that it has some wear, right? It's okay that it has like a hole or a little issue here and there, right? And um, I actually passed on a really nice Pendleton item the other day, and it had some holes in it. And, it, you know, the damage was pretty extensive, so... I think I made the right decision, but a lot of people were commenting saying, Steve, like people like it. Like, I don't know if like it is the right word, but people don't mind if it has some holes or little, little tiny little tears uh, on the Pendleton item. It adds character to it. It's, it's aged. It's old. You know, people wear it around the house. You should have put it on Etsy. So I don't know if I made the right decision. I think I did, but uh, certain items, you know, like I said, it's going to have a little age to it and that's okay. You know, a little wear. <clears throat> Oh, this is a beauty right here, guys. So moving on to 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, this is always going to be hot. I know it is. These Patagonia fleeces that are just really, really weird looking, unique. Uh, check this out right here. This has a cool little uh, style to it. Uh, let's check out the description. Patagonia Classic Re Retro X Cardigan Fleece. So they provided the measurements. I like that. They prov provided a lot of measurements, which, you know, I think it's a good idea to minimize the risk of getting a return. Uh, but watch this, guys. I'm going to type in Patagonia fleece under men's clothing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort it from the highest to the lowest. I, I just want to show you guys what, what some of these items are selling for. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I found a couple of these out in the field, like the really like vibrant, like obscure, uh, odd uh, fleeces in the Patagonia brand. And I tell you, they sell quick and they sell for a lot of money. All right, so let's let's edit this from highest first. Holy mackerel, guys. Literally, I just, I'm not going to say what I wanted to say, but I got very excited when I saw this. Imagine going into a thrift store at a garage sale, right? Imagine walking up to a garage sale. Maybe you're from like Arizona or something, right? Or New Mexico. <coughs> and uh, imagine coming across this. Ooh, -hoo! that looks beautiful. That style, it's kind of got like a uh, Native American uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know, tribal, just, just, it's just like a, uh, a cool little design on this thing. I mean, check that out right here. If you're not getting excited about this, do some research in terms of Patagonia and items that are like this. It's kind of got that, uh, you know, that, that, Pendleton feel to it. $249, guys. I bet you this thing sold fairly quick. Um, let's see what the seller is on this. Primetime VTG. So very interesting, guys. That is a lovely, lovely, lovely item right there. Uh, I'm going to jump into the comments section, see what's going on in the comments. Yeah, Good Use Goods is uh, saying, you know, I remember when I was younger, or, um, you know, back in the day, I used to go to the go to the store and spend 80 bucks or, no, 150 bucks on a pair of jeans. Now it's $6 at the Goodwill. You know, I'm the same way. My girlfriend, she makes fun of me. She's like, Steve, you're disgusting. Why are you wearing other people's clothes? And I'm like, listen, like, why am I going to go out and waste my money, you know, my hard-earned money, in, in your hard-earned money? Why would you waste your money? Spit, you know, giving these retailers these ridiculous prices, you know, I, I know private label. Like, I understand what it costs some of these items to be made. Like, they're literally, like, designing these items for, like, $3, and, like, they're branding it and selling it for, like, 100 It's crazy. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I don't know if it's because I'm half Jewish or what, but I tell you, I, I think my, my money's better served elsewhere, like paying my rent or going out to get a nice meal versus spending, you know, 200 bucks or 80 bucks on a pair of jeans. It's crazy. Yep, hot chick thrift. What's going on, girl? Good to see you. Uh, I have saved myself a lot by starting to thrift my own clothes. 
Someone's asking, what about Pendleton women's suit jacket? Uh, some of the suits do well. Uh, just go over to the sold listings and take a look. I don't have a ton of experience selling women's uh, Pendleton, you know, sport coats and blazers and suits. I think I've sold a few in the day. Um, but yeah, someone's uh, saying Yves Saint Laurent. That's definitely a good brand. Someone said it's crazy good. I found a dress once sold for three twenty-five. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So let's keep moving on. Uh, that was definitely a cool uh, cool item right there. As you can see, guys, some of these Patagonia fleeces. I mean, they go for big, big bucks. I mean, one ninety-nine, two hundred, one seventy-nine, two ten. I mean, it's crazy, guys. There's like a cult following. See, this is something that gets me excited right here. It's just this. It's this Aztec design right here. This just unique tribal pattern i mean this is this is it this is the money this is the money right here if you ever are at a thrift store at a garage sale and you see a patagonia with a design like this you pick it up you know i'd probably pay up to you know 50 bucks for something like this you know obviously maybe more if if i saw that this specific color and design patagonia sold um but just it's just remarkable what some of these items go for Oh, so this is really good right here, guys. If you find cashmere sweaters in the Ralph Lauren Polo brand, they do extremely well. I remember one time I found this, uh, I think it was a V-neck green, kind of like a puke green, 100% um, cashmere Ralph Lauren Polo sweater. I think it was just a traditional one. I don't think it was like a purple label or anything, but... Um, it was 100% cashmere. I think I sold it for like 90 bucks, right? And it wasn't in anything special, but it just goes to prove Ralph Lauren polo sweaters, 100% cashmere, do extremely well. Looks like this one sold for 185 or possibly a best offer. Oh, I like the pictures. Very nice pictures. Very clean. Focused in very well. The seller's taking great pictures. Ah, look at this. So it looks like there may, may have been a few issues and they edited in a couple arrows to show. So I like that a lot. 93% cashmere, 7% wool, hand knit. Yeah, the hand knit sweaters do very well on Ralph Lauren. Oh, that's a great, I love the background. That's excellent. Very nice. I'm very impressed with wonderful, wonderful cashmere. So it looks like these guys, I don't know if they specialize in cashmere. I'm assuming they do, um, but that's a great listing. All right, let's keep going down the line. <laughs> wonderful cashmere with a, what is that? Is that a, what is that? Is that a ram? I don't even know. Oh, wow. It looks like they've got like customer service and everything too. So that's cool. Let's type in, uh, let's go on a little rabbit chase. Uh, Ralph Lauren Polo. Uh, let's do 100% cashmere sweater because I want to show you guys what I'm, what I'm thinking in my mind. This stuff does very well. Let's do uh, sold. Let's go to used because I don't want to necessarily be looking at the, the new. Let's go U.S. only just to keep the currencies <laughs> consistent. Um, you know, As you can see, these things are selling very well. That's a steal, $21.99. Wow, maybe it has some flaws. $22, 22 59 You see, that's more of the price point I'm looking for on these items. 46 that's more consistent. Boy, some of these guys, you know, they give away these items so cheap. I mean, look at this right here. Cable neck, crew neck sweater, um, Ralph Lauren polo, kind of like a like a bright color, obviously unique, I want to say. 2050, oh, you gave it away. I would not, I would not sell that thing. Oh God, that, that kills me. Two extra large, 100 percent cashmere. I'll tell you guys right now. Cashmere sells hot. Big sells hot. Yellow, bright, maybe a little slower sometimes, but sells hot. It's unique. 2050, ooh, I, I don't like that. Um, I think I, I would have shot more towards like 60 to 80. I don't know if I would have got it. Maybe the market's changed a little bit. Oh, it's women's. Well, maybe that's the case because I know men's tends to do a little better, I think. So I don't know. Anyways, getting a little excited. Um, let's keep moving down the line. What do we have that sold? Briani, that's a great brand right there. Let's try to find something a little unique. So I talked about this brand the other day. I found this brand, uh, you know, probably a handful of times. Dale Norway. This is a. Is it from? Is it a Norway brand? I'm I'm really bad. Uh, let me see. 
I didn't mean to say De Norway. Obviously, it's Norway. Dela Norway. What was I thinking? I was going to say it. Never mind. Anyways. What does that say on the back? Or is that the inside? That looks very interesting. Yeah, this does really well, guys. Look for the metal clasps, right? Look for this tag right here. Right there. Quality from nature since 1879. $146, guys. That's crazy. I love this brand. I'm not going to dive into it too much because we've we've talked about this brand. But that's a brand, guys. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2025. That brand's going to still be hot. I know it will. It's just high quality, guys. It's a very, very – it's a high quality – uh, sweater. If you ever get your hands on one of them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Let's see if we could find a brand that's a little unique or something that I think is going to really do well, you know, moving on in the upcoming years. Uh, Marmot, well-made stuff. I'm pretty sure that'll, that'll be consistent. Oh, here we go. You know, a lot of these brands I've talked about previously, so I don't want to dive too much into them, but like, you know, if I had to say, like, what is one of my top brands, like, if I could only choose 10 brands, like, if I was on a desert island with thrift stores and I could only buy 10 brands, I know that's a funny example, you know, what would one of them be? CC Filson right here. This is a fantastic brand right here. Sells hot, sells fast, sells for good profit. It's hard to come across. Um, let me see if I can find a tag for you. Doesn't look like there's any tags. Oh, there we go. Here's one. A genuine garment. CC Filson Company, Seattle. Definitely an awesome brand right there. Let's find something that maybe you guys aren't familiar with. Canada Goose. <laughs> I'm still looking for this brand, guys. I'll tell you, when I find this brand, I'll make a video because I'm going to be pumped up. But uh, Canada Goose, very, very uh, popular brand in Canada. Sells for a lot of money. I've never come across one. I've never even seen one at a thrift store. Maybe out in Canada, they have a lot more of these. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions, guys. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave a comment. Appreciate the likes, guys. We've got 71 people watching live, 34 likes. So uh, appreciate it, guys. Smash that like button. If you're enjoying this video right now, hit uh, leave, leave, leave a comment and type one. Let me know. Let's see how many ones we got. Do you like this video? Type one in the comments and smash that like button. Let's see if you guys are enjoying this show. Let's let's get let's get you guys interacting and engaging a little bit in the comments. Let me update my my comment section feed a little bit. All right, the Vesto Vision one, Lady Halfin one. So you guys are enjoying it so far. Bobby Rock, what's going on, Bobby? Taylor Rob, good to see you guys. So it's good. To, it's good to see you guys. I want to know right now, how many of you guys are looking to get into selling clothing on eBay, but you've never sold, you've never sold a clothing item. Type two, type the number two in the comment section. If you're kind of like a window shopper right now, you're looking at this, you're just studying, you're researching, but you haven't sold your first item. I want to know how many people are in the comment section who, who haven't even sold their first clothing item. So I don't know if you guys have been staying up to date with me, but I've actually been listing my clothing on my iPhone lately, and um, I've been enjoying it. It's been quicker, a little quicker for me. You know, my listings aren't as pretty, and my descriptions are kind of basic, and I don't know if you want to say ugly, but if you were to see one of my listings, you'd be like, Steve, really? I just haven't found the need to go in and create this huge, beautiful listing with HTML and, you know, put all this information in. I feel like if you put your information in the item specifics and you have a good title and good pictures, you don't need much of a description. Like literally my description is like one sentence with like my measurements and that's it. And they've been selling. Um, let's see. What have I sold recently? I'm going to pull up my eBay my eBay app. <clears throat> what did I sell? Yesterday I sold a uh, a vintage Roos. I don't know how to R O O S bag. That was pretty cool. Sold some VHSs. But what have I sold for clothing recently? Uh, I've been selling a lot of Paul and Shark yachting uh, button front shirts. I sold a pair of naked and famous jeans for fifty five. Sold a uh, camel hair Brooks Brothers sport coat for 40 bucks. A pair of diesel jeans for 45 plus 15 shipping. Sold a, uh, a vintage Pendleton, a pair of APC jeans. Um, so clothing's been selling pretty well considering, you know, I don't have a ton of items listed right now. I wish I could list more, but I'm, I'm pretty strapped on time right now. 
So Alice McCarthy says, I have some listed but none sold yet. Alice, let me know um, You know what type of brands do you have listed up right now? You know, One thing that's been helping me out a lot is running sales on my store. So if you guys do have enough listings you know, in your eBay store and you, you – excuse me, let me rephrase that. If you have enough listings up and you decided to get a store, uh, you do have the ability to run sales if you have a basic store through the Markdown Manager. And I've just found that the algorithm really favors stores that have sales running, right? So that definitely helps to boost sales. You know, also consistently listing. The more I list, the more I sell, bottom line. The more I grow my inventory, the more I sell. Now, again, um, we do have – in total, we have three stores. One of them's my girlfriend and I. Then I have my main store I've had a while, and then I have another store that is kind of like my little secret store that I don't really share out to the public. Um, but between the three stores, you know, the more we list, the more we sell, right? And, uh, you know, when you have different stores, it doesn't really matter if you list one in one and then the other in two. Like, if you list within that store, you seem to get more sales in that store. So, I don't know. Um, let's see. Vintage sweaters, uh, Barnabay and other items. Yeah, do your research, guys. I mean, <clears throat> it's really important, guys. This is why I do these videos because this is where you make your money in the research phase. You know, um, you know, one of the things that I researched early on was that Brooks Brothers uh, sport coats did very, very well based on the design and the material. What would you guys call this design right here? This kind of looks like a tweed blazer right here. I don't know if it's tweed. Is that? It looks like it's. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's tweed. But I learned early on that uh, Brooks Brothers blazers do very well. If you get the solid navy blue uh, blazers with the gold buttons, they do extremely well. If you get the sport coats like this within the tweed material, it does very very well based on the label inside of the Brooks Brothers uh, Brooks Brothers uh, coat. Depending on what label it is, some of them do better than others. You know, if you find uh, camel hair Brooks Brothers sport coats, they do very, very well. So, I mean, you got to study. It's more than the brand, guys. It's more than a brand. I mean, this sold for sixty four ninety nine right here. We've got a Brooks Brothers sport quote sport coat appears to be tweed. <clears throat> Uh, yes, it is made in the USA. Forty two regular measurements. I mean, that's a beautiful listing right here. Yeah, that's very, very nice. So this is kind of like an older vintage style Brooks Brothers. You could tell just based on the tag right here. Great listing. Great pictures, guys. This is a this is a fantastic listing. My listing's nowhere near as pretty as this. <laughs> Not even close, but you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think pictures are important. I think a good presentation is very important. But I think it depends on your time as well. I mean, it takes time to create a listing like this. Now, again, I'm sure the seller has a template that they're using, um, and they're probably listing, you know, directly. They're probably taking pictures on on a DSLR camera or maybe a point and shoot, and then uploading it uh, to maybe like a program, like a third party software or something like that. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, great item right here, Brooks Brothers. Let me go back into the sold listings. What else do we got going on here? Let's find something unique. Oh, gosh, this is beautiful. I know we were already talking about C.C. Filson, but check out this right here. I believe this is called Mackinac, Mackinac style. Wow, that's weird. It's kind of got like this little top layer uh, that's like going over the shirt, which is really cool right there. Uh, let me show you the tag. Oh, gosh, my mouth is watering looking at this. I love this brand. $295, guys. It's crazy. Oh, wow. This is a dream right here. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2000. I, I'll tell you right now, guys, I've actually been thinking about <coughs> getting into the collector's market for these Ralph Lauren items and start just collecting them. Because I tell you right now, guys, these things are only going to be going up in price. Like if you have an item like this, like 20 years down the road, like I honestly think that that's going to outpace inflation and outpace any growth you're going to get in a CD or something like that. I don't know. I just, these things are in just high demand. I wish there was a way that I could see what these things were going for like 10 years ago to see how, how much these things are appreciating in value because these Ralph Lauren, these rare Ralph Lauren items guys are just ridiculous. Like, uh, check this out. Ralph Lauren, 1992. Um, I'm going to 
Oh, crap. I don't know what I just did. Uh, let me make sure everything's smooth. Sorry, guys. I kind of screwed up my screen a little bit. Okay, cool. looks like we're on, we're on track. All right. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. I want to show you guys these, these Ralph Lauren, uh, these crazy Ralph Lauren items. I, I've been thinking about getting into the collector's market um, and start kind of like maybe sniping some of these really, really rare items, you know, even if they're six, 700 bucks and just holding on to them because some of these things are just becoming so rare that I really think that they may, it's, it's kind of like a speculation move. But for someone like me who I, I just enjoy this stuff, um, I might start doing that. I'm not sure. So let's go highest first. Holy crap, guys. Look at some of these items. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is beautiful. Take a look at this Ralph Lauren item right here. 1992 Stadium. Jeez. It's got the hood and everything. Wow. That is phenomenal. All right, guys, I'm not going to dive too deep into this. I want to continue teaching you guys about different brands to be on the lookout for uh, in the upcoming years, 2017 and beyond. So let's keep uh, let's keep going down the line. What do we got here? So I think there's another brand that's going to be you know continue to do well. It's done well over the last three or four years. Now again, you're going to want to pick and choose certain items. I always find that the sport coats do best, the suits do best. If you find any sweaters or jackets or anything like that with odd materials, cool designs, bigger sizes. They tend to do better than just the common, you know, you know, medium polo shirt or just the common, you know, Ermini Gildo Yegna button front, uh, long sleeve dress shirt. You know, if you find these more, I don't know, harder to come across, come across styles, I, I you know, I think they're going to do better over the long haul. But take a look at this right here, 100% cashmere. Really? It doesn't, doesn't look cashmere. Oh, yeah, actually it does. 100% cashmere sport coat. 138 buckaroos right here. Check out this puppy. And look at the sellers actually taking pictures outside, which is uh, <laughs> pretty cool. I like it. Different different touch. Uh, very nice. Yeah, but I think this brand is going to continue to do well in the upcoming years. The brand is pronounced, as I like to call it, Ermenegildo Yegna or Zegna or Ermenegildo Yegna. Uh, 138 bucks right here. Cool. Yeah, I think this is a brand that's going to continue to do well. Let me uh, let me show you guys some of the items that they're selling. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that. Uh, we'll go in here. We'll go here. We'll go here, and then I'm going to sort it by pre-owned, sold in the U.S. And let's just start from the highest. I want to show you guys some of these top items to be on the lookout for. Uh, you know, you'll see that the suits are the suits are going to be doing the best. Jackets are going to be doing the best. I mean, some of these items are just really hard to come across. But um, I think probably the best opportunity with this brand moving forward are the suits. I think the suits are uh, are going to continue to stay in demand, and it's just a very clean, professional style. Just it's very hip uh, in the professional community. I, I just think it's a great brand. All right, what else do we have? Let's jump into the comments and see what's going on with everybody. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. So we got 66 people watching live. Appreciate it. 53 likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Slow sales, anybody? Had the same. Uh, my sales are pretty consistent. Um Based on a lot of the members in the green room who sell on eBay, sales seem to be pretty normal and consistent. So I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary. Again, when it comes to people having great sales and you know rapid velocity versus slow sales, I really think it comes down to the individual more than you know the seasonality. You know, the more you list, the more you're going to typically sell. Now, if you're listing 10, 20 items a day and you're not selling anything, and you've been doing that for a couple of weeks, now there's something that you know, you may want to take a look at whether it's free shipping or your keywords or your descriptions or who knows what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, Taylor Rob is saying booming since November 1st. Uh, Hot Chick Thrift says you have to be careful with the fur hood. If you find one, if the fur isn't in good condition, it, it, it won't sell for as much. Excellent tip right there. 
Uh, Devesto Visions had found an Ermini Gildo Yagna Pure Cashmere Blazer. Yeah, that's a great find right there. That's going to sell very quick. Uh, Dave says, tried FBA, didn't work too well. I mean, FBA is one of those things where you've got to find what works. Like, it works. Like, there's no doubt about it. There's thousands. There's, I think there's what, over 2 million prime sellers, right? Or FBA sellers, I believe. That was the stat that came out. I mean, it works. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, Amazon FBA works. You can make really good money on it, but you have to figure out what works for you, right? You got to figure out what your business model is. Um, <clears throat> for some people, it's pawn shops, right? Nowadays, you know, I wouldn't recommend the pawn shops as much with all these restrictions going on. They're restricting a lot of these big brands like Texas Instruments, which recently they've been restricting like everything. Um, but it might be thrift. It might be garage sale. It might be, you know, wholesaling or private label. You've got to figure out what your business model is. Uh, but Amazon FBA, I mean, if it didn't work for you, you're going to have to try different things. I mean, it works great. Like it really, really works great. It's an excellent way to make money, but you've got to figure it out, right? Congrats. Dave Vander Grift says, just started on eBay, $1,000 in October. That's a great milestone to hit right there, Dave. Uh, my buddy Vinny just hit that milestone as well. Um, actually, he passed it. I think he, he did $2,000 in sales last month. But I remember when he passed that 1000 like it took off. So uh, congrats on that. There's something about hitting that 1000 milestone that uh, kind of just shoots you into the uh, – it <laughs> shoots you into the uh, skyline of profits. All right, let's keep looking through at some other brands that I believe are going to do well in the upcoming years. Let's see. What do we have right here? So True Religion, I mean, I think True Religion's a very strong brand. I believe that's going to do well. Uh, you know, again, with True Religion or Gucci or Louis Vuitton or any of these brands that are, you know, very high end, they're going to get faked and bootlegged often. So do your research. But uh, True Religion's one of those brands that I think are going to continue to do well. Uh, Air Jordan, that's another brand, um, Michael Jordan's brand, that's going to continue to do well. you got to find certain items. I don't hear a lot of people talking about uh, Jordan or Air Jordan when it comes to clothing, but there's certain items that are like super collectible that go for really big money. So be on the lookout for that right there. Diesel, this is another brand that I believe is going to continue to do well. Um, I love this brand right here, Diesel. Again, I just sold a pair of Diesel Vathani, I believe that's how you pronounce it, jeans for 45 plus, uh, I think it was 10 or $12 shipping priority somewhere. Uh, but Diesel is an excellent brand right here. There's different styles, there's different models um, that are going to deliver various price points to you. Um, but Diesel is an excellent brand. I love this high-end Italian brand, sturdy, strong, well-made, well-designed. Um, this is a brand that's going to continue to do well in 2017, 2018, 2019. It's been doing well for the last four years uh, that I've been selling, and there's really been no price corrosion at all. So that's definitely an awesome brand right there. Tommy Hilfiger. So when it comes to Tommy Hilfiger, guys, look for the, the vintage, older types of items. Um, I don't really mess with any kind of newer Tommy Hilfiger stuff unless it's like, you know, a really nice puffer jacket or something like that, something that's in style. Uh, but the older kind of vintage style uh, Tommy Hilfiger stuff does well. Like you might even see this and think to yourself, like, this isn't even that impressive. But I guarantee you this is uh, older in nature. Probably from the from the 90s, I had to guess. Um, maybe early 2000s. I'm not sure. This actually, this tag doesn't look that old. So I might be wrong. There might be something special about this. I'm not sure. Um, but anything kind of older, Tommy Hilfiger does very well. I'm going to type that in right now. Tommy Hilfiger uh, Vintage Men's Clothing. I'm going to sort this from high to low. So, you know, moving on the next upcoming years, continue looking, you know, I, this is the type of stuff I'd probably collect as well. Like if I was going to speculate with clothing and hold something for 10 or 15 years to, you know, to double, triple my money, I would probably go with vintage Ralph Lauren and vintage uh, Tommy Hilfiger stuff. There's just a lot of, just a lot of like buzz around this stuff. So uh, let's see. Yeah. Check this out right here. This is really, really cool. 390 bucks. 
I mean, this stuff goes for big bucks. It's crazy. I actually sold something similar to this before. Actually, never mind. It wasn't that similar, but it had like the bright colors and sold it for like 200 bucks. Great, great item. Vintage Tommy Hilfiger, guys. You can tell based on the color, the style. If you come across something Tommy Hilfiger and it's old and it just looks like something that they would wear in like the 80s or the 90s, buy it. Buy it all day long. As stupid as it might look, it goes for really, really big money. So I've never even heard of this brand right here. I'm gonna open this up because I just I'm just curious. Sold for 250 bucks. Gasha. Rub. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Uh, I don't know what this is. If anybody knows what this is, it looks like something from a different country. Uh, let me know. 100% authentic, hard to find. I don't know anything about this brand, guys. So if you know anything about this brand, let me know. I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to throw that into the uh, search bar because I'm just, oops, I don't know why it always does that. I'm curious to know what is going on with this item. Yeah, but I love clothing, guys. I mean, if you're just like getting started and you kind of want to start making your first few dollars online, clothing's the way to go. You can get in cheap. It's all over the place, guys. I mean, going to a thrift store, what are the two you know, most abundant things you're going to see. It's going to be clothing and books. Like if you're asking like, Steve, you know, I want to get started, but I don't have a lot of money. I, I don't have a lot of tolerance for risk. What items should I get started with? If you're going to do Amazon, it's books all day long. If you're going to do eBay, it's clothing because you can get this stuff dirt cheap. And in certain parts of the country, they have fill a bag sales. They have half off sales. They have 90% off sales. They have dollar day sales. Um, so, I mean, it's very minimal risk, and it can kind of get your feet wet. So, I don't know much about this brand, guys, but it's selling for a crap load of money. Let's see what the comments section is saying. So, I also want to ask you guys a question. Um, president Trump elected. The elected president, Donald Trump. Put a one in the comments section if you guys are happy about that. If you're happy about Donald Trump being the next president of the United States, or put a two if you're unhappy. We're going to keep it at that. We're not going to get into the politics, but I'm just curious, guys. Um, curious to hear what the spread is in this in this comment section right now with uh, with the whole presidential campaign. I stayed up. I stayed up until about 1.30 in the morning Eastern time, and he was up big time, and then I fell asleep and woke up at like 3 in the morning, and he was president, and I was like, holy mackerel. Like, he had won. So looks like we got some... I, I knew this was going to be a split. There's a lot of people happy. There's a lot of people upset. Stone Mason's like, listen, man, I voted for you, Rakin. So I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's get back to business, guys. Um, what else do we have? Let's let's find a few more brands to be on the lookout for. Oh gosh, this is so beautiful, guys. I I'm just like I'm such a sucker for Ralph Lauren, like the 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 rare stuff. Like I just can't get enough of it. Like check this out. Oh, you might not think that it's anything special, but you find a Ralph Lauren item with something just weird and unique like this with a freaking dragon on the, on the front, big, big, big bucks. Like I'm just such a sucker for this stuff. I love it. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Let me go back because I just missed something that I want to share with you guys that I, Hey, where'd it go? Um, crap. Mm. Oh, here it is. This is what I want to share with you guys. Kooji. So this is like the, the sweaters that uh, Cosby used to wear or Biggie. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Kooji sweaters are going to continue to be popular in the future. It's definitely trending. There's a lot of people who like wearing this stuff. I mean, check this out. This is for sale for 245 bucks right now. 2017, 2018, 2020. These colorful Australian branded Kooji sweaters are going to continue to knock the socks off of consumers. Um, I found a couple of these typically selling between a hundred, 200 bucks. Um, let me go into the comments. Excuse me. Let me go into the search bar and type in Kooji sweater. I'm going to sort from highest to lowest. I want to show you guys what to be on the lookout for. I mean, this stuff sells like for ridiculous amounts of money. Let's go pre-owned. Holy crap. I'm getting excited just seeing this. Let's go sold. Woo! 500, 400, 
three seventy five. I mean, check out some of these sweaters, guys. I mean, these things are freaking ridiculous. This is an item. Not all items in this brand, right? Get don't get me wrong. Plenty of Kuji items that aren't going to do that well. But you know, you find this style Kuji, these sweaters, big big design, uh, big 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 deal, psychedelic designs, colorful. I mean, these things are going to continue to rock on moving forward. All right, guys. So I'm going to stop going through the sold listings, and I'm going to answer some uh, some questions. So if you guys have any questions. Feel free to ask away. I um, also want to share a few things behind the scenes in terms of what I've been up to lately. So let me get the comments section up. Where are you? All right, let me pull that up. Cool. Also, guys, if you enjoy this type of content, check out greenroomuniversity.com. It's the uh, the membership site that I run alongside with the Bonafide Hustler, my good buddy right here, and the College Picker. It's a membership site. We offer monthly and yearly plans. We've got a community of over 840 people over there right now, and you know we got a bunch of private content, private shows, uh, private videos, private training, uh, resources, eBooks. We've got a community, a Facebook community, so uh, consider checking it out. We just released this uh, this new video on our website, so check it out. It's uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, uh, let's see. <clears throat> let's go over to. Excuse me, real quick. Let's go over to the comments section. Stone Mason uh, finally caught vid you made. Good stuff. Appreciate it. I want to know what have you guys been up to? What's new in your life? Are you getting into any new businesses? Right? Maybe you're getting started selling clothing, or maybe you're starting an Amazon FBA business, or you know, maybe there's a new venture that you're looking forward to. Uh, I want to share something that I'm actually researching right now, and I'm at the beginning phases of it. And I just put an announcement inside the green room about this. I'm actually going to be kind of <coughs> sharing my journey of starting a new e-commerce business so if you guys are in the green room you'll be able to uh, get the bird's eye view of what I what I do and different resources and kind of how I evolve this this new business um, so yeah if you're wondering what this new business is that I'm gonna be starting I'm actually gonna be starting my own e-commerce website so if you guys are a green room member you know I put out a post last night and I'm gonna be kinda creating my own little diary in there and I'm not gonna be sharing much on YouTube um, and with Facebook and, and anything like that. So if you want to follow my journey, you're going to have to get into the green room and I'll follow it there. But I'm starting up my own e-commerce website. And uh, I'm going to be using a platform called Shopify to create my, my website and my store. Um, I am in the research phase right now. So I'm still trying to figure out like what niche, what type of products I'm going to sell. I'm still trying to figure out what business model I'm going to pick up, right? I, I might go... Uh, private label, you know, I might do uh, wholesale bundles, I might do drop shipping. I'm still trying to figure out what my actual business model is going to be. Uh, but the one thing that really attracted me to this new type of business, and I've got a lot of friends who are succeeding with it, and I've been chit chatting with people and taking courses. And uh, the one thing I like about having my own e commerce website is control. I like the control of being able to you know, have my own customers and control my own customers, have my customer database, be able to market to them, to be able to serve them one-on-one, -on -one, to be able to control my marketing efforts, and uh, to really just have my own business with the control. I think that's it. You know, With all these changes going on with Amazon lately, with all these restrictions and people getting suspended and kicked off, it just really made me realize that I want to kind of start something up on my own and it's going to be a slow process. So um, I'm really excited about that new journey. And if you guys, you know, want to start up your own e-commerce website, um, it's a different ball game, right? It's definitely a different ball game with, you know, eBay and Amazon. The reason why most people sell on it is because you get access to millions and millions of customers, right? You don't have to go out there and run advertising campaigns, PPC ads, you don't have to create your own content, you don't have to do retargeting campaigns, Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, any of that. You just literally put it on there, you pay them the fee and you know, you sell them the platform. The problem is you don't have, you don't really own the customers. You're always kind of just looking for the next nut. And um, I don't know, it's just something cool that I'm going to be trying out. So 
I know it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be difficult. Uh, there's no guarantees. It's going to be a lot of hard work ahead, but it's something I'm going to be starting up on the side. And uh, yeah, just very uh, interested and excited to start that up. Again, it's going to be a little part-time startup. So, you know, I'm going to continue selling on eBay. I'm going to continue selling on FBA. I'm going to continue doing everything I'm doing. It's just going to be a little side project. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited about that. I've got a few friends that are doing really well. Uh, some doing drop shipping, some doing private label through their own Shopify store. So should be a lot of fun. Um, let's see. I think you should be a motivational speaker on the side. I don't, I appreciate the gesture. Um, you know, but who knows? Maybe down the road. <laughs> Uh, Stone Mason says less freedom or more employees, Steve, but thrilled to see how you go and grow. Yeah, I appreciate that. We'll see how it goes for sure. Top five brands. That's a tough question right there. Um, you know, just overarching uh, top brands, I'd probably say Ralph Lauren, right? Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you brands that you can actually find. Uh, Ralph Lauren, Brooks Brothers. Um, there's a lot of items within Ralph Lauren Brooks Brothers that can make you really good money. Now, there's a lot that won't, but those are re two really, really good brands. Uh, Vineyard Vines. I love Vineyard Vines. Um, CC Filson, Pendleton. Um, I'm trying to think of brands that you could actually come across. Diesel. I love Diesel. Robert Graham. I know I went over five brands. I got a little excited, but uh, those are some brands that could do very, very well for you. Ermini Gildo, Yegna, Canali. Um, so many good brands out there. Uh, Hot Chick Thrift says, same, no idea to even how to even begin Amazon. This is on the 2017 bucket list. Well, you got to go FBA. I'm going to tell you that right now. You, If you're going to go Amazon, you've got to go um, – let me make sure that my, my thing with Jiggy is working properly. Okay, cool. You've got to go FBA. So – you're going to want to start selling something, right? And I know you're scared. You've got to learn the process of shipping um, you know, into FBA and all that. So I would start with something simple and easy, low risk, books. Download the Amazon seller app to your phone, right? It's free. Start scanning some books. Watch my videos. I have, a, I have, I have so many videos um, about how to start a book selling business and selling books on Amazon. Just type it into the YouTube search. I'll come up. How to sell books on Amazon, rake and profit. I've got shows that are an hour long, and it's not fluff. It's a precise, you know, mapped out. I had a whole outline where I just covered everything. So watch that. Start with books. Books is a great way. Um, and just learn the process of shipping into FBA, right? Learn how to analyze deals. Learn how to read your dashboard. Just, just start. You just have to start. And once you get comfortable with the books, then you'll start to like maybe want to move out into other things like toys or electronics or video games. But just start. What do you think about Funko Pop? I don't know a lot about them. I know they're very collectible. You know, I know the collectors like them. I've actually. When was it? When I was out with Jameson, my buddy Jameson, I was on my 90-day trip. We were in, I don't know where we were. We were in Florida, and we were hitting a bunch of uh, Barnes & Nobles <coughs> stores that had a sale going on. And I remember we popped on like 100 of them. We were getting them for like 2 or 3 bucks each. We were selling them for like 15 20 bucks each, some for like 8 some for like 40 most of them for like 10 to 12. Um, but we did pretty well on them, but we did have some issues with returns. Well, at least I did because these collectors are just like so anal about like the box being a hundred percent perfect. So I guess my one tip is be careful. Like if it doesn't look a hundred percent minty fresh, like they're just going to freak out on you. So <laughs> be careful. You can't blame them. I do almost all FBA good use good says I merchant fulfill councils like N sixty fours and whatnot mainly because they sell same to second day no point in FBA delay for Q four time yeah Q four is a, definitely a different a different um what am I trying to say there's there's certain items you're gonna want to merchant fulfill hey biohazard picker what's going on Adam if you guys aren't following Adam give him a quick subscribe biohazard picker very knowledgeable guy glad to have you here man hope you're doing well. Sure, you're killing it with uh, Q4. Yeah, but I don't want the fees and handle hands off of FBA, Steve. MF is better for me. Yeah, so I mean, 
you know, it looks like Stone Mason has tried both, and I, you know, I applaud him. I think the best thing for you is to try out both and give it a real chance. Don't just try FBA for like a week and then just say like Merchant's best for me, and don't you know do the same for Merchant Fulfilling. Try out both. I mean, I was Merchant Fulfilling for a couple months at a, you know, when, when, how long was it? Maybe three months I did it for, or maybe more. I don't even know, but I tried it for a while, and then I tried FBA for a while, and I realized for me. Being a busy guy running multiple businesses, FBA was the best for me, right? Um, but if you've got the time, you know, to merchant fulfill your items, right, then I'd say go for it. I think there's a lot of benefits to merchant fulfilling, you know, having your inventory in your own hands, less fees. Um, I do think you're going to make a little less money. Typically, you get more for FBA. But I mean, I think there's a lot of benefits to merchant fulfilling as well. So it looks like Stone Mason's done his research. So if it works for you, it works for you. Hey, Derek Key, good to see you. I'm call, I'm just calling you Hot Chick Thrift. I don't know if it's like a different name, but we're just going to pretend that uh, that's how it's called. So Hot Chick Thrift. <laughs> I do website design as my day job and enjoy it, so I really wanted to have my own clothing site. Yeah, that's cool. Check out Shopify.com. Uh, it's a really uh, interesting e-commerce platform, and you don't even really have to design that much. I mean, a lot of people think in order to create your own e-commerce site, you have to have all this, you know, website design skills. I mean, they're coming out with these platforms nowadays that just make it so easy for the average person. You know, the the thing that I've learned most about running a successful e-commerce business, and I'm talking having your own website, the key is two different things: having a really, really good product within a niche that's hungry. Right. So, for example, maybe selling fishing stuff to the fishing community. That's a that's a thriving, you know, hungry community. Having a really good product and serving it to a hungry audience. But the big thing with having your own Shopify store and your own e-commerce site, from from what I've learned, right? I haven't started yet, so my opinion may change. Is knowing how to market properly. A lot of these 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 uh, Shopify stores are making most of their sales from Facebook ads right now. So that's kind of like the hot thing right now. Selena Christine, thanks for inspiring my hustle rake and keep these live vids coming. Hey, anytime, Selena. Appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully it's helped. Stone Mason says retired, not worried about the money, and all of my books are used. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, keep killing it, Stone. It looks like you're you're on your game. Adam's responding back to when I asked him how he's doing. Not much is going on. I am on the road sourcing and shipping, averaging about six to eight boxes a day. Hopefully you are killing it. Yeah, I'm not, I, you know, I, I'll be 100% honest with you guys. Um, I'm definitely not killing it when it comes to eBay or Amazon. I'm doing well, you know, I'm making some good sales on eBay part time. Um, I'm doing pretty well on Amazon, but, you know, I'm running a YouTube channel. I'm running the green room. I'm selling locally. So, um, you know, my passions are more towards helping others and creating content and, and more of the teaching route right now. Um, that is changing up a little bit with my new decision to start my Shopify store. So you guys might see a little less of me because I, I kind of want to build up my own e-commerce site. And it's just something that I'm, I don't know, just something that's getting me excited. So uh, that might change a little bit right there. But um, yeah, I'm doing well, you know, doing very well. So uh, definitely not doing six to eight boxes a, a day. I'm doing more like a couple boxes per week. Um but you know that works for me. So you got to find what works for you. That's the beautiful thing about this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Does anyone here have an Instagram account for reselling? I have an Instagram account. It's uh, Rake and Profit. But yeah, if anyone else has an Instagram account, definitely link it below. Uh, I'm sure. That question may have been for actually reselling items, which I don't. I have it just for myself. Um, I'm sure you'll come back around with more lessons learned once you master your Shopify store. Yeah, possibly down the road. Um, but I'm definitely, I've definitely learned from from my mistakes over time with content creation. Whereas, like in the past, there was times where like I would have a little success and I'd start making videos about it. Whereas now, I'd rather focus my time on mastering something and then coming back later on and kind of sharing my sharing my journey with it. So I'm not going to, you're, you're not going to be seeing me on YouTube talking about my journey with Shopify and all that. It's just right now my goals are a little different. I'm going to kind of stick with what I am more knowledgeable with, which is eBay and Amazon. So 
but yeah, I appreciate it for sure. You know, I'll try to share my journey on social media a little bit. Thanks, Steve. I was thinking of taking a few days off from my day job when I start and just going full, fully in Amazon so I can learn and have the time. Just do it. You know, if this if this inspires you at all, I'll tell you the story about my mother. My mother was this was what probably three years ago. She used to always come to the thrift store with me. We're really close, and you know. We like to get together a couple times a week, and you know I was full time selling clothing on eBay. This was over three years ago, and um, you know I used to go to the thrift store and I used to spend four or five hundred bucks on half off days at Savers. I mean, crazy, crazy. And she used to always come with me, but she wasn't a reseller at the time, and she used to she was starting to kind of get bored. Like she wanted to hang out with me and go to the thrift stores, but like she was kind of just like buying and consuming for herself. And finally, I remember it came to the point where she's like, "I want to make some money." Like I was surprised because. I don't know. I just never saw her kind of doing something like this. And I said to her, well, why don't you start selling books? You can literally just, you don't have to have all this knowledge. Like with, with eBay and clothes, you have to know so much. Like there's no app to scan a clothing item to know if it's good or not. Like, yeah, you can look it up on eBay, but there's so many factors, right? So I said like, that's not going to work. And that's too much work for her. I said, why don't you start selling books on Amazon? And she's like, no, I can't do it. Blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. And finally, I convinced her to start doing it, and uh, she actually started selling as a merchant on FBA. She had her, her cell phone, she had the Amazon seller app, and she was scanning items. Well, long story short, um, after a couple months, she started making some money, you know, a couple hundred bucks here, 20 bucks there, 50 bucks there, and, you know, she got hooked. But the problem came in where, you know, she has a full-time job. She would come home from work, and then she was fulfilling all these orders and, you know, having to stop at the post office and you know, tracking numbers and all this stuff. And it was kind of becoming a hassle to her. And, you know, we decided to move her into Amazon FBA. And, um, you know, she was only doing a couple hundred bucks a month at that point with, with merchant fulfilling, maybe up to 500, 600 bucks. And uh, once we moved her over to FBA, I mean, her sales spiked to a thousand bucks pretty quick. And, you know, recently she actually did, uh, I think it was almost three or $4,000 in one month, you know, not profit, but, you know, Working full time, my mother, I mean, she was able to do it. If she's able to do it with no knowledge of really entrepreneurship or no knowledge of reselling, no knowledge of the computer, and she's able to do it and she's able to sell, you know, a thousand, two thousand bucks a month pretty consistently, you can do it. You just got to get started, right? Anybody can do it. It doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter your previous knowledge with, um, you know, reselling or anything like that. It doesn't matter if you've never sold on eBay or Amazon before. You can start doing it. You just you just got to get started, right? You've got to just take some time to learn how to do it, right? I know it's intimidating. You know, if you're coming from eBay or you're coming from never reselling, just thinking about how to like sell on Amazon and learning the FBA process and all the rules and which ones are restricted. Like I know it's it's like intimidating and it's overwhelming, but just take it a step at a time. You don't have to know everything at once. But you just have to get started. Just send in your first shipment. Watch, Start watching some videos. If you guys are a Green Room member, we actually have a beginner's Amazon FBA course in there, which will walk you through the whole thing. We've got a whole community over there. You know, If you're not a part of the Green Room, jump into some of these live feeds with people or watch some free videos on YouTube. There's people who literally make videos just walking through the whole process. You can do it, right? If I was able to do it, and I'm not the brightest bulb out there, my mom was able to do it, right? I know 14 and 15 year olds that are able to do it. We've got a green room member, Les, who I believe he's I believe he's on Amazon. I know he does eBay. I mean, they're what, like 75 years old? They're doing it. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your previous knowledge. You just got to do it. Just got to do it. And uh, hot chick thrift, you're hot. You got it. <laughs> you can do it. So anyways, guys, I know we're kind of veering off course a little bit. Um Let's see if there's any more questions in here. <clears throat> yeah, hot chick, hit me up. Um, Steve Rakin on Facebook. We could definitely talk a little more. Rocky Mountain Resell motivation. You know, I wish somebody motivated me when I first got started. I mean, I wish I started Amazon a long time ago when I was doing eBay because I missed out on so much money at the thrift store and at garage sales. I know it. Uh, Joel Info Biz says, hey, total noob here. I've been lurking you. like your material and personality, believability. You give me confidence. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, 
I'm not selling you a dream. I'm, I'm just being 100% honest. If you want to make a couple hundred bucks, it's possible. If you want to make a couple extra thousand bucks reselling, it's possible. There's people doing it. I've done it. My mother's done it. I have friends who do it. Tons of people. There's millions of people out there doing it. This isn't some late night infomercial. And um, I don't really have anything to gain by you getting started. I'm not worried about the competition. I think there's plenty to go around. Um, just do it. There's money to be made out there, guys. We live in you know the information age. It's 2016. It's about to be 2017. If you're broke, if you're not making money and you're healthy and you're capable and you know how to work the internet, if you're broke, that's your fault. Because there's a million different ways to make money out there, guys. And e-commerce is just one of them. There's so many ways to make money out there. It's ridiculous. You can get you can get a job on Fiverr doing little gigs for five bucks. You can get a job as a freelancer on Upwork, right? You can do surveys. You could sell on eBay, sell on Amazon. There's a million different ways to make money on these platforms. It's crazy. Like it's just it's unbelievable. But you've got to take that step. You've got to take it and you've got to make a decision. I think one of the problems that people are having, and this is actually a problem that I deal with, and I was just talking to my buddy about this the other day. There's so many options out there. Like there's so many like opportunities. A lot of times we just look at them. Like it's like it's almost like looking up at the stars, right? And we're just so amazed by all the opportunities that we never take a minute to say, you know what? I want to go after that star. Like I want to, I want to start that business and I'm going to do it. And then you stop looking at everything else and you just grind it out and make it happen. Like that's one of the things that I deal with. And I think that's one of the challenges that I'm going to have to deal with, with starting up my own e-commerce website is, you know, so much time in the day and realizing that I've got to put time into something if I want it to grow. So if that means pulling back a little bit on YouTube or pulling back a little bit, on eBay or Amazon to make that work, then that might be the case. But you've got to make a decision and say, you know what? That's the ladder I'm going to climb. I've made the decision. I'm going to go for it. Whether I succeed or fail, I'm going to try and I'm going to do my best and I'm going to study and I'm going to take action and I'm going to give it a chance to succeed. I mean, there's so many times in the past where you know I've said I was going to do something and I don't take action or I don't give it a chance long enough. You know, you try something out for a week and then you give up. I mean, if you want to succeed with anything, looking back at past successes I've had with YouTube, with eBay, with Amazon, with Kindle Publishing, with physical books, with all these different things that I've done in the past. And then all the things that I haven't really succeeded with like private label, wholesale, um, different brick and mortar businesses. I was doing real estate at one point. The things I didn't succeed with, it's not because I couldn't. It's because I gave up, like looking back at it. Like I literally gave up and copped out and took the easy way out. Like the times I've succeeded, I just kept going. I kept moving forward. The times I failed, I gave up. And I think that's the biggest problem for everyone, right? Is you get, we don't give ourselves a, a, a chance to succeed. So figure out what you want and just go for it. Whether it's selling clothing on eBay or selling books on Amazon or starting up your own e-commerce website with Shopify or starting a YouTube channel, give it a shot. Screw what everybody else thinks, right? Obviously you want to do your research and study but I can't tell you guys how many people say you can't make money selling clothing or you can't make money on Amazon FBA or you can't start this or you can't do that. But there's a million people who are doing it. I think the problem is we don't take the time to give ourselves a chance to succeed and figure out what works. So going on a little rant right now. <laughs> um, <coughs> sorry, guys. I'm getting over a cold. Uh, Christine G says, I'm so pumped. I made a live show. You inspired me daily watching the work on the sly. Uh-oh. You're at the, you're at the day job watching some rake and profit. <laughs> uh, question other than PayPal, what other methods do you use, uh, to have custom deposit funds safely? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I mean, when you sell on eBay, um, I believe everything is like through credit cards and PayPal. Everything gets paid off through PayPal, right? On, on eBay. Um, Amazon, they deal with it. Like if you sell on eBay and Amazon, you're not having to mess with those payment processing. Um, you don't really choose. I don't think I, I don't mess with it. So I think, you know, eBay's PayPal and then Amazon's whatever it is, you get paid out direct deposit. They handle all the payment processing. You know, if you're talking about selling on your own website, um, you know, for example, uh, the green room, we take payments through, uh, what are we taking payments through? Uh, Stripe, which is a service that offers, you know, payments through credit cards and PayPal. 
Um, when we used to use Gumroad, I believe they took payments through credit card and, and, and PayPal as well. I don't know if I'm understanding the question properly. So, uh, Let's see if there's any other questions coming in. So I think that's about it, guys. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Let's see if we can get up to 100 likes right now. It looks like we got about 66 people watching live. So if you did enjoy this, smash the like button, guys. Um, definitely appreciate that. If you guys want to connect with me more, um, the best way is to just be a part of the green room, guys. I, I can't get back to these Facebook comments anymore and the YouTube. It's just it's – just, there's too many coming in. So we created a membership site. It's called The Green Room, greenroomuniversity.com. That's the best place to network with me and other people that I interact with and learn from and, and grow with. Uh, check it out over here, greenroomuniversity.com. Um, if you want to get a free book, we've got a free book called 100 Amazing Items to Resell. You can get that as well in the description, first line uh, in the description. But, yeah, that's about it, guys. We appreciate you. Uh, well, I appreciate you. And we, everybody in the comments, appreciate you guys watching live. Smash that ba that that like button. Show some love. If you're not a subscriber already, subscribe, right? You'll get these videos sent directly to your YouTube feed. But, yeah, with that being said, kill it. Make today the day that uh, you make it happen. So, yeah, with that being said, have a good one. Bye.